Hi everybody, welcome to the Mom Series to Misunderstanding of Multiplicity. My name is Maria. So I may or may not talk about any issue having to do with more than one, multiple personality, disassociative identity disorder, DID, disassociative disorders, positive plurality, whatever people are calling it these days. Um, I'm just going to show you some hats I've knitted, um, some samples, and show you the different textures you can get with different yarns and how mine shaped up. Generally, when it comes to making hats, which I absolutely love doing, it's my favorite thing to do, um, they can <laughs> look pretty, pretty different from what the pattern is. I mean, close. But I end up putting my own spin, literally, on the hat as I'm going around. Um, suffice to say, I once made not one, not two, but three hats for a dear cousin of mine who his birthday was coming up, Father's Day was coming up, and he's fair skinned and he's bald and he loves golf. I will one day show you the hats I made. <laughs> I never gave them to him. But fr friends have seen them. They, they turned out looking like lampshades. And what they were, were I was going for a kind of Great Gatsby 30s, 20s, 30s, that really chic Paul Newman. I those checkered hats that people used to wear on the golf course. Like really ecocentric, I think it's called Chucks. Oh my gosh. I and I found a pattern out here and I, I cannot think of her name right now. When I get it, I will link to it. And it kinda had a newsboy look to it, and a golf cap. But really cool with the argyle, che argyle is when you have the checkers that work up. All three of them with adjustments came out looking like lampshades. Like uglier than the lampshade on my A Christmas Story. Just really bad. I was actually hanging them on my lampshades when a friend came over to look at them. We were laughing our butts off. Okay, so gauge is important, and I didn't used to know that, and now I do. But more importantly is really knowing the size of a person's head. I'm a 19 and a half inch head, so I'm child size, or what hat makers back in the Victorian area called Victorian hat size. Um, it doesn't mean you have a small brain, although in my case, I think I do. I'm pretty sure. I do. I'm pretty sure my brain is shrinking. <sighs> so I want to show you the difference. Um, the Chica Beanie, I've taken pictures of it and shown it, but I want to show you the difference in texture with different yarns. I used Lion Brand Feels Like a Butta, B U T T A, in the color Lemon which is their cream. So I did the same stitch count as I did with this. Got gauge for both of them. Look at the difference. You really see the texture here. This is mainstay economical yarn. 99 cents it used to be at Walmart in the color denim. 99 cents. 100 percent acrylic. Um, and it really does look like denim. Um, so you can really see the texture and if it. This one is fine for me because I like a loose hat for the summer. But with feels like butter, my brand, 100% polyester, same stitch count. And I got gauge. I just want to show you. And I will wear this. It's fine. I'll wear it. See if I can get the texture to show up more. And that really is why you need the gauge, is not only size, but the texture to show up. 
right? So I would wear this, um, I would flip it up, I would, I would wear it uh, if I was pulling weeds out in the garden, if I was walking in the sunshine and um, maybe too sunny out or my hair was wet and I wanted to put something on it or whatever, or I would, I would wear it if I just didn't want a whole bunch of pollen and ragweed in my hair. And I would wear it cooking in the kitchen too. It's perfect. Good hat for cooking in the kitchen, right? A little slouch. A little big on me, but okay. Okay. But, this one here. More. <laughs> and you can really see the texture in it more. Same stitch count. Two front yarn. Same gauge. You can see the, the texture. So these are both knitted. You can definitely see the size change there. Okay. Um, my head today. And then this hat here is, uh, I've made four of these hats now. I'm making a fifth one in cream with Karen, one pound. And this one I actually started to rip out so it looks so funny on top. This I'm using the color grape. And this is the um, twisted, that goes the other way. The Twisted Celtic, no, it goes the other way. The Twisted, <laughs> Twisted Celtic Heart by Kristen at, um, oh, was it here? At iNet Studio, or not iNet, um, Knit Studio. Okay, so that's this one. A little too big for me. But I don't mind wearing them big. I mean, you wear them off your head like a little slouchy, it's fine. Studio Knits. Kristen McDonald. Studio Knits. We have your hearts running through it, which I'm not getting good light to be able to show it. But it's truly a great. You can see the heart. And there's a twist in it too. Um, so that's how that one turned out. I have <laughs> my head hurts today. Um, I don't know why it does. And then I made the um. Okay, oh just got it done. Um, still got a black hat. I made the three hook hat. So this one is by. Kristen McDonald at Studio Knits. You can see the hearts in it now. This one is Chica Beanie by Lena Skurvansky. Skurvinson, I'm sorry. In different colors. And then this is by Bendy Carter. And like I said, my hats turn out to be my own skin. So I didn't turn where I was supposed to in this pattern. It's really important that you turn where you're supposed to. I didn't, so I ended up, mine went in. It puckered in. Um, and I actually like it better. Um, and I'll show you why. Even though it looks like a bonnet, and I look like I need a horse and a buggy right now. Watch. I love it. It's kind of a downton Abbey-ish feel and if you do this it looks even more elegant a lot of different style in it and the flat top is really cool and I like that it it goes in and puff, puffs out now this is supposed to come out like this I'm really feeling Tom Petty and Prince right now in Dr. Seuss but it's okay it's really really nice and you could do you could do this and you got kind of a 
newsboy thing happening. You can really play with it. And you could put one side up like this, one side down. You've got kind of a cloak bucket thing happening. So I'm really loving this one. I'm loving it. The only thing I would say is if you don't turn with this pattern, the three hook hat, it will kind of bring in a tighter band around your head and you'll feel it. So you'll get a tighter band. But I'm feeling, which is kind of my my aesthetic is I always go to yesteryear, like 20s, 30s, 40s. Uh, I was watching the movie Hours when I was finishing this. And I kept seeing Virginia Woolf with her bucket hat. And I mean, I just love that whole suffrage era um, woman coming into their rights. And, um, you know, it just... It's a cool little bucket hat. You can do all kinds of things with it. Got a real Downton Abbey kind of feel to it now, I think. Downtonish. I dreamt about the queen the other night. I've been <laughs> busy. Knitting, knitting, knitting. Crocheting, crocheting, crocheting. So those are my hats that I finished. Um, the yarn, I'm, I'm not going to be using today. But I've got gauge for with mainstay. The yarn for this pattern is dusty blue. I almost said dusty rose. Dusty blue. Lion brand Vienna's choice. You only need one skein. And this is called the Garden State Beret. And it is pattern number L80131. And it's a free knitting pattern. And it's really simple. Um, so I thought I would work up a small sample to show you how, um, how it's supposed to uh, shape up, shake out and what you need to do if you've never knitted before. And then just talk about a, a couple of snags. And I'll finish up my purple one. But I'll work it up on, I'm going to be working it up as a sample. Um, my mainstay economical, um, I think this is called bubblegum pink. Nope, cotton candy pink. Cotton candy pink. And this is what I love about the mainstay yarn. It, it's named perfectly. It stays. If you have a, I mean, it doesn't change from a two to a four to a three to snarl to pilling or splitting. It's just really, it stays a four medium most of the way, all the way through. It doesn't fade out. Like if you have to rip out, sometimes the yarn will fade out. If it doesn't do that, the color stays. And the color waves are very much, like it does look like cotton candy. Um... This mainstay one is called Venom, and it does look like Venom. It really does. So the mainstay economical yarns, I think they, they are put out by um, Walmart, churchwalmart.com. And, but the actual yarn is spun in Turkey. Excuse me one second. This one, I don't need a raspberry. You want to make a raspberry beret? This is great. But it'll be fine. This is another mainstay. And it really does look great, like a grape. So I like them. So um, I'm using this for an afghan I'm making, so I don't want to part with it. It's a little bit more of a high end yarn, but I don't mind buying this because they give a portion of it to St. Jude's Hospital, which is a very good hospital for children. Um, free. And right now during the pandemic, St. Jude's Hospital is going in and taking care of so many children that were horribly just so many children that were having cancer treatments and getting 
just in the middle of surgery and everything, St. Jude's just came right in and said, and Doctors Without Borders is there. And um, I just really pray for all those people. And um, oh, so the hats I'm making can be given to the Red Cross Salvation Army here locally. We, uh, for a time, we could donate anything, Latvians, Afghans, blankets, uh, but they had an actual wish list of stuff they needed, like diapers, pampers, hats, socks, gloves, scarves, coats, I mean, everything. Um, a lot of the people that are displaced will probably go through immigration, refugee and immigration, uh, probably through places like Catholic Family Center, with the Catholic Church, um, because... The church actually was, before social work, the church was social work. So um, I know locally, if, if, if you're in Rochester, New York, you would go out to um, Clinton Road and uh, ask, go, to, go to refugee and immigration and see what they're collecting for Ukraine. Um, and there's wish lists everywhere. Um, just type in locally where to send your stuff and they will they will take it. Um, there's hospital drop-offs, there's church drop-offs. I have a Ukrainian church right down the street from me where I normally met with people and made pierogies every year and uh, voted. That's where we did our voting and I made, I learned how to make bread with um, them and learned how to make pierogies and um, they're collecting everything. So if you're in Rochester, New York, uh, go to the Ukrainian church over on Titus and St. Paul and just ask them what they need. They're lovely people. And, you know, spend time with them, play with them, and just fellowship with them. Um, so I'm not using Banner's Choice because I'm using it on something else. I am going to use Mainstay. Cotton candy. Just for a sample, just to show you the stitches, and then I'll make mine and come back and show it to you later. So what you'll need is some kind of a darning or large eye needle. It doesn't have to be that large, so you can get your yarn through it. It could be this large. <laughs> it could be, right? You'll need some kind of um, little clippies or, or place markers. You don't have to use... Oops, don't use that. You don't... You don't have to use these little paper clippy ones, but they're cheap. You could use the circular ones. You can use little pieces of yarn. I've used uh, I've used bobby pins. So whatever you have. Um, but you need four that are a different color than one. And scissors and a measuring tape. Or a ruler. Or a ruler. And that's all you need for this pattern. Except you need circular needles or D pants. They're using Bannon's Choice 16 stitches of knit. Just knit 16 stitches. Um and you should get four by four, four or four inches. 16 stitches is four inches. So when you get gauge, um, any yarn will work. They're using a, they're beginning their hat with a smaller needle, two needles, circular. You can use interchangeable or regular or DPNs. Um, and they're beginning with a US 6 for the brim and a 7 for the body of the hat. So once you get the brim done, one and eight, like one and a half inches of the brim done unstretched, you're just doing a simple knit, uh, two by two knit pearl, knit, knit, pearl, pearl, brim. And then you're going to switch to a bigger needle. 
like you'll go from the six to the seven or whatever needle size you need to get gauge. Um, if something is calling for four inches and you work it up with the yarn you're working with and you're only getting uh, maybe three inches, you're going to want to go down in your needle size. And if something is going too big, uh, like maybe five inches, but you need four inches, you want to go up in your needle size. So you're going to start with a smaller needle for the brim. And then you have just one setup row where we're going to be doing two special stitches that I'll show you. Um, and that's your increase row. And then basically you're just going to knit, knit, purl, purl, knit, knit, purl, purl, all the way around with a smaller needle. Switch to your larger needle and you're going to be knitting into the front and the knitting a stitch and then knitting into the front and the back and increasing a stitch all the way around. So you're going to go from 80 stitches, which is the cast on, to 120. And then you're just going to knit a uh, stockinette. You're going to knit in the round. And as you're knitting in the round, it's going to turn into the stockinette because you're going round instead of straight. So it won't just be plain garter stitch. And then um, when you get to about seven and a half inches, you're going to start decreasing. And the stitch they're using to decrease is the SK2P, which is really lovely because it gives it lots of shape and movement. You can kind of see that in the pattern here. You see as it's decreasing, it's got a lot of shape and movement going on. It's really pretty. So an SK2P is just you're going to slip a stitch as if to knit. Like you're going to enter your stitch like you're knitting and slip it. And then knit the next two together and then pass your slip stitch over the two you knitted. That's the way they're decreasing. So we'll be doing that for a few rows. And then when it gets too tight to work on your circular 16 inch needles, you're going to go ahead and work it off onto your DPNs. Um, you will need one marker, one color, like I said, and then later on you'll need four markers in a different color, different than the beginning. So if you want to come back and join me, I'll make up a small sample. Um, the cast on is uh, 60 stitches, but I'm going to make up a small sample in 40 stitches just to show you how to get this going. And I'll come back and show you my hat later. Thanks for hanging in, and I uh, hope you'll join me to do this. I don't have a camera that can go on the stitches, but I'm going to stand right here and do them real quick, and it'll be a short video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.